who pays for this for you? The Lord is a living God and he sees the church. He sees the servants. In fact, he knows their needs before he calls them. And that's why I said that, in fact, I, may, I meant also in the physical realm. Another case in time. I traveled from one of the missions the Lord sends me to. And when I just arrived, I began to reserve for the next flight, the next mission. That's when the airline and the travel agent that was handling this sent me a message. They asked, why are you booking your flight twice? I said, no, I'm booking for the first time. I've just arrived actually from another mission. I need the flight itinerary so that I may be able to go and get the visa. Why are you booking your flight twice? They asked, because you're already in the system. I said, no, I did, not, I did not reserve this flight before. So I asked the office team. They said, no, they have not yet done this. And I found out that somebody called, uh, I will mention his name, he's my son now, you know. Somebody called Dr. Makwengo. A very senior executive in Tunis, Tunisia. In fact, he works for the African Development Bank director, I think, of resource allocation, management, whatever, you know, the big projects they run in Africa. He had been following the message. Every place, every country, every crusade, every conference. And he was just compelled. He wrote, so the, the flight was already paid for, fully paid for. And you know, he paid even a higher class. And I said, I don't deserve this because many times I sleep on the streets as opposed to some many years ago. Uh, you have I grown. Am still in the streets. You have grown. You'll tell me that. Yes. You'll tell me. But uh, the way you are 10 years ago is not how you are right now. Okay? The Lord has provided, yes. as you've mentioned. So, still, I'd like to understand from the person who's watching this and I want to see the physical sense of it yes. and say, fine. How, does, how, how do you operate? How do you put together a meeting who pays for it in the end? You know, where do you live? How do you move? Because you don't ask for money. That's a very powerful question, my son. Now, let me reiterate this again. In fact, you could say I'm chasing wind. That's how it looks like. When I first engaged the pastors on this, because I knew the Lord was sending me directly to rebuke money in the church. Oh yes, it was very clear to go and speak against money. In the streets of Nairobi here, I remember I was walking and saying, look, how do you rebuke it when you don't have it? Do you understand the dilemma? And I think this is a real classical case for the church today. And that's why the Lord is able to take me globally to be able to rebuke the same money and to teach them another way. It's incredible. It's like saying, and that's what faith is all about. Now I want to bring it very clearly to your viewers. When the Lord spoke about faith in the Bible. Do you know what faith is? Faith is believing God. That's all. Believing God. Nothing else. Uh, definitely nothing else. And that also means that if the Lord says today we will have a meal here, we will have a meal. If the Lord really wants to send me to Australia to preach the gospel, he must provide it. So we don't plan for it? In the church, it is the planning for it that has dropped the church. That's very powerful that you ask that, planning for it, no? 
the human, the carnal context. I need this amount of money to do this. Planning in the human form. In fact, if you look at the issues you're dealing with right now in the church, in this land, if you look at the church situation, the condition of the church in this country, sometimes you wonder, how can you teach faith when you yourself have no faith? Because trying to get outside the law to get help means you have no faith that he that sent you can provide. And so, right here, I still want to come back to this case. He said, my case, you see? Right here, the same thing I taught all of them. And I'm so blessed right now that they have, in fact, the Lord has come through for me. Can you imagine if the Lord did not come through for me? If I told them don't touch money, and they went and the ministries dwindled and collapsed, they would have said he is a liar. He told us the Lord would provide, the Lord has not provided. So for me it's different. I can tell you from this calling it's different because the Lord has to come through to establish the word. But listen to this. Believing God, faith, meaning I know that I have to get to the Dominican Republic in the next three weeks. Hallelujah. I know that I have to get to the Dominican Republic in the next three weeks. Does that mean I have to go still? And if I went to still, whose mission would that be? There are two competing forces here. One is loftier than the other, the Lord, and the other is the devil. Would I still be the servant of Christ? So what do you do? Thank you. Chasing wind. I think in the street vocabulary, it would be equivalent to chasing wind. I know the Holy Spirit sometimes comes as wind. But listen to this now. You wait on the Lord. And that's why the, the pastors too that I've mentioned here, the bishops council here, They don't call upon people to bring money. Bring God loves a cheerful giver. Do this. Why? Because I made it very clear to them that we will not go that way. If that is the way that has destroyed the authority of the church, diminished it, if that, I'm going to come to the finality of it, just be patient. You see, if that is the way that has actually incorporated sin into worship. How can you claim that the Lord has sent you to bring deliverance, to rebuke sin, bring repentance, bring reformation, bring revival, restoration, correction, when you yourself, you're not yet delivered? Did you understand the whole premise? So that had to tower very high in this ministry. And I'm not saying to them, I was not saying to them anything that I was not doing. And that's why I want to come to it. If the Lord, I'll give you an example. One time, I think it's a doctor in the U.S. He sent a message. I, I, was, I was in Italy. I think I was in Italy. I'm trying to uh, find which country. I was in Italy. And he sent a message through the email. He said, please, please, please. I have seen. I, I didn't know I was a doctor then from the first email. I have seen that the man of God rebukes money in the church. Okay. I have seen that he is rebuking money in the church. You see that? Hmm? And I've seen that, in fact, he first told us there is no PayPal, PayPal on the website, meaning where I can pay with my credit card to get a certain help or service. I would 
like to help the man of God and pay his next ticket, which was to the next ticket was where? Uh, the next ticket was to one of the countries, I think Angola, whichever, the country. Botswana, I think. I would like to pay his next ticket. This is somebody you've never heard of this human being. You've never known this person. You don't even know what they do. Do you know the response we wrote to him? The office team first replied, you know, they replied instant to him. They, they fired back. They said, are you aware the man of God rebukes money in the church? And are you aware that the very mission, the foundation of the mission that brought him is based on the premise that the love of money has become the biggest curse in the church? Are you aware about these things? So they replied. He wrote back. He said, I know. I have been to the website. And I have been, in fact, that's when he opened up to us. I have been following the man of God for two years now. And every country he goes to, he enters the church, the conference, the crusade, whatever it is, and the first thing he rebukes is the love of money in the church. And that's why I say to myself that if this man is rebuking money, I need to help him at least with the next ticket that he may never preach money. That was him. How awesome! But you see, before, before I realized he was engaged in that with the office team, when I landed here and checked my email on the iPhone, I fired back. I asked him, are you aware I have been sent to rebuke money? That was the third email. Listen to Miss Martz. Our God is a living God. You must practice faith before you preach it. If you do otherwise, you are not the servant of Christ because you cannot lead people to this faith. And that's why I said, it's like chasing wind. Because how do you just tell a bunch of, I mean, thousands of pastors and bishops, I know this, uh, the last question on this issue, but let me exhaust it. How do you just tell thousands of bishops, uh, of, of pastors and the whole bishops council, 15 now, 15 bishops with huge jurisdictions that look do not ever touch money. And then they would ask you, are you going to supply? At that time when I was telling them never touch money, they had just seen the power of the Lord in the meetings. They had not seen anything else. They didn't see a fat bank account. So I did not have money to dish to them. So I really understand that the Holy Spirit must have compelled these people to believe me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Are we able to stand up? Thank you.